Well, that was a short stint at world number one, wasn't it? Daniel Medvedev loses against Gamon Feast in Indian Wells very early on, of course. And that has meant now that Novak Djokovic has taken the world number one ranking once again. It's a really surprising turn of events just because we expected Medvedev to go further. Monfils, though, is in some great form. And it was just a really good match by Monfils. He won in three sets, uh, managed to beat Medvedev. I think it's the third round as well, isn't it? So, yeah. <sighs> How long can Djokovic then hold on to that again? We don't know. He's not going to be playing Miami. So I think when the rankings come out uh, in the next few days, he'll have, just re released on Monday, actually, next week, he'll have a 55-point lead on Medvedev. So that's not much. I'm pretty sure Medvedev's playing Miami uh, and Djokovic isn't. So if Medvedev can gain some points in Miami, he'll take it back again. Of course, people like Zverev and Nadal are not too far off as well. So they'll be looking at the world number one ranking at some point this year uh, if they manage to, well, for Nadal manage to continue winning matches, for Zverev if he can find some form because he uh, lost early on in Indian Wells, which wouldn't have helped his cause. It's the shortest, though, reign at world number one for a bit of time, if I'm not mistaken. It's only been a few weeks. I think for Medvedev as well, I think it's, as we're here, we may as well quickly briefly talk about Medvedev and, and why he potentially lost that match. I think for one, they're slower courts and he prefers quicker courts. I think that's just a basic thing that everyone knows. That's why his record on the clay hasn't been as good as other surfaces. He did make the course finals of Roland Garros last year, but Stefanos is supposed to beat him really comfortably. And that might be surprising to some because... His record against Tsitsipas in on hard courts, so on those quicker hard courts, is very, very good. Uh, he's got a superior record in the head tab there, but on clay, uh, it's uh, another story. Similarly, if we look at not just the conditions, but more of the mental aspect, of course, the whole uh, you know issue going on at the moment uh, in in Ukraine with Russia as well. I think mentally that would have affected him. Yes, he's not Ukrainian, but he's still Russian and he's not able to play under his flag. Uh, I think he probably gets a lot of questions on that as well. So that would have been an added, I think, you know, not pressure. I think it would have been an added um, factor, I think maybe gnawing in the back of his mind at times and subconsciously it, it will affect him. I mean, whether... He's able to block it out completely. I don't think he'd be able to. Can he block it out enough that he's able to win matches? You'd hope so, but we just don't know how it's affecting people uh, all around the world, to be honest with you. So uh, it's a pretty stressful situation. Uh, in addition to that, also, we've got to be honest as well. Having the world number one ranking means that everyone wants to beat you. You know, you are a valuable scalp. And yes, you might think, well, he's only just moved from world number two to world number one. It's not that much of a difference. It is. It is. It's the first time he's ever been world number one. And he went into this tournament as the number one ranked seed. He, you know, would have been expected to go pretty deep, at least. Unfortunately, it just wasn't to be. Uh, it wasn't to be. Uh, Monfils played some inspired tennis. Medvedev just wasn't able to quite hit through the surface uh, as he would have liked. And Monfils just at the moment, is definitely having Indian summer uh, to his career. Played really well in the Australian Open uh, against uh, Berrettini, it was. I think he could have won that match as well. Went to five, and then the fifth set, he just dropped his level. Whereas here, uh, in the final set, in his best of three match at Indian Wells, he upped his level, uh, I thought. And yeah, just he, he's got such a diverse and entertaining game that is fantastic to watch when he's on song. For Medvedev, he'll come back and he'll be good. I just, we're just hoping, I think, that he will um, hopefully rekindle some of that form. I think since the Australian Open final loss, he hasn't really played his best tennis, I don't think, for quite some time. So if we think about that was in January, we're now in March, it's been a couple of months. He'll go into the clay court swing, and again, maybe he'll have some success there because no one really expects him to do too much in the clay court swing. So maybe there'll be 
you know, not a lot of pressure on him, so he can probably just go out freely and play, even though the surface isn't maybe the best surface in terms of being suitable to his style of play. I think he'll do pretty well there uh, at Roland Garros. I wouldn't be surprised if he makes another quarter, even maybe even a semi. So who who knows? Uh, Djokovic, of course, will return at Monte Carlo in April, so we'll see him there. Uh, he'll be hoping to go into that as well. Number one, it just really depends on whether Medvedev is going to play in Miami, how far he's going to go in Miami, uh, and if you know if he doesn't do enough, then Djokovic will be world number one, and he will most likely be able to play the whole clay court swing or however many tournaments as he wants, because in Europe the restrictions and regulations are pretty relaxed as of today, anyway. So most likely he'll be able to play those matches. So all those tournaments, which is a positive if you're a Djokovic fan. And I think a positive if you're a tennis fan in the sense that obviously you want to see the best players playing, uh, obviously in a safe way. So if they think it's safe, then, you know, you just have to follow the guidelines. So uh, similarly, when he wasn't allowed to play, he followed the guidelines. He's not able to play Indian Wells and Miami. So that's understandable as well. Uh, thanks very much, guys, for tuning in. Please remember to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Really appreciate it. And of course, uh, do get involved on Twitter, Instagram, or on our Patreon as well uh, if you want to support the channel even further. Thank you very much, guys. Stay safe and well, and see you on the next video.